Look, the facts speak for themselves. America is the world's leader in caring for the environment. Catch this. list of challenges, acidification, pollution, ice melt, rising sea levels, disappearing species, and indiscriminate development practices, all of these carry even more challenges downstream, so to speak, to each of our economies, to our national security, and to international stability. Steady reductions in sea ice are opening new passageways and new opportunities for trade. We plan to increase access to the Arctic's resources and do so in an environmentally responsible way. I think there's a question of whether, whether there is any environmentally responsible way to uh, increase the intensity of use of the Arctic's energy resources. Okay, I, I'm Ray Pierre Humbert. I'm the Halley Professor of Physics at Oxford University, and my uh, research uh, involves uh, the physics of climate of the Earth and other planets, both uh, present in the near future and in the distant past. The Arctic is at the forefront of opportunity and abundance. It houses 13% of the world's undiscovered oil, 30% of its undiscovered gas, and an abundance of uranium, rare earth minerals, gold, diamonds, and millions of square miles of untapped resources. Fisheries galore. I did quite re remarkable that um, uh, at a time when one of the major threats to hum humanity is the uh, global warming due to uh, carbon dioxide emissions and fossil fuel burning, uh, what's being touted as one of the great advantages uh, of some of the destruction of the Arctic environment that's caused by global warming is that we can now do more of it by extracting yet more oil and natural gas and burning yet more fossil fuels. Uh, it also, the, the statement uh, also neglects the, the fact that increased uh, mineral exploration uh, in this area uh, has a very disruptive effect on the, on the environment, on a very fragile environment. And so it puts economic exploitation you know, way ahead of the other values that the Arctic Council has sought to protect in the past. Steady reductions in sea ice are opening new passageways and new opportunities for trade. This could potentially slash the time it takes to travel between Asia and the West by as much as 20 days. Arctic sea lanes could come the 21st century Suez and Panama canals. The secretary is, is looking at the Arctic with blinders on because he, he is seeing, he's talking about the benefits uh, of just this one thing, ignoring the well-proven uh, economic losses that are caused over most of the rest of the world, including in some parts of the Arctic by, by global warming. Uh, things such as uh, loss of agricultural productivity, uh, things such as uh, major changes in water resources, things such as heat stress making potentially making large parts of the earth actually uninhabitable for mammals uh, out, outdoors, uh, and where air conditioning actually becomes a matter of life support rather than just a matter of comfort. And so uh, it's a very typical uh, dodge to, uh, to find one economic benefit of global warming and uh, let that be all of your economics and not look at the whole picture. Look, the facts speak for themselves. America is the world's leader in caring for the environment. This is one of the most absurd statements uh, I have ever heard come out of the mouth of a, uh, of a U.S. official. And, uh, and uh, since the election of, of President Trump, uh, we've had many, many absurd statements come out of the mouths of various U.S. officials, but this this one really has to take the cake. It was never actually true that that the U.S. is a world leader uh, in uh, in these kinds of environmental concerns. Uh, you could say that uh, very easily that, say, Sweden has been a world leader. Sweden has gone much further towards decarbonizing its economy than the U.S. ever did, uh, even under the climate-friendly Obama administration. And even the European Union has much, made much greater strides and much greater commitments to decarbonizing its, its economy.
Our energy-related CO2 emissions fell by 14% between 2006 and 2017. The rest of the world rose by more than 20% during that same time period. I am really astonished that, uh, that the Secretary is taking credit uh, for the 14% decline in the uh, U.S. carbon dioxide emissions uh, that happened before, largely before the Trump administration ever took office. Th those uh, declines uh, largely came about uh, through um, through uh, climate policies uh, that uh, that were put into place by previous administrations and which have been systematically dismantled with a lot of other environmental protections uh, by the by the Trump administration. Uh, the United States emissions in the past year actually surged by about three and a half percent, showing the success of the Trump administration uh, in actually dismantling previous policies. And this has largely come about through uh, incre increase in the uh, emissions uh, due to the transportation sector, which is something that uh, uh, administration policies have, have pretty much a direct, a direct control over. But I want to actually highlight a quite remarkable admission uh, on the part of the secretary here. Our energy-related CO2 emissions fell by 14% between 2006 and 2017. This is actually an admission that carbon dioxide is important. It's an admission that uh, that global warming is not some some uh, Chinese hoax meant to clobber the U.S. economy. Uh, it is an admission of something that Donald Trump himself has never actually admitted, that CO2 is what causes global warming. I think that's most the most remarkable thing in, in this whole speech. We're entering a new age of strategic engagement in the Arctic, complete with new threats to the Arctic and its real estate and to all of our interests in that region. I, I find it quite remarkable that um, he is talking about threats that are actually due to climate change uh, while uh, avoiding the words climate change altogether uh, and, and in, indeed uh, attempting to obfuscate the whole issue of what is causing these, these threats. Uh, the, the sort of Orwellian doublespeak that, uh, that goes on throughout the Trump administration uh, is, is, it has a quite chilling effect on discourse surrounding what is actually causing the very kinds of problems uh, that, that the secretary was talking about. Uh, the, um, uh, there have been very overt efforts uh, throughout the administration to actually erase the term climate change itself from discourse. But it's impossible to talk about the kind of changes in the Arctic that the secretary was talking about, loss of sea ice in particular. And we are hitting a new low in sea ice this, this very springtime, which is unquestionably due to the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere uh, caused by human activities. The very fact uh, that we are having these problems in the Arctic and these threats in the Arctic is due to climate change. Uh, and uh, the secretary still isn't willing to come right out uh, and make a clear statement that yes, these things I'm talking about are climate change and we have to use the word. And that's the problem we need to address. We must hold each other accountable and we must not allow this forum to fall victim to subversion.